DU is an amazing utility if what you want to do is get a machine parsable output of the size of your directories, whether that is to go and like clear up some old files or move stuff around, whatever it is that you want to do. But it's not exactly the most user readable. Now, you can go and make it better with some of the options which go and sort stuff and go and change the output here to something a bit more readable, but it's still ultimately just dumping text onto your screen. Today we're looking at a Rust rewrite known as Dust. It is DU plus Rust, therefore it is Dust, which honestly is more thought than I see put into most project names, but ignoring the name for now, it's not going to be as powerful as DU, but it is going to show you the data in a far, far more readable format. The biggest change you'll notice is unlike DU, it's not going to go and dump out every single directory. It's only going to show you a summary of the largest ones. Now, the reason why this is still useful is because this is the main reason why you would use an application like this. For example, let's say I go and run this on my videos directory, for example. I probably don't care about every single thing in here. What I probably care about are the largest directories because that's where I want to clear up some file space. By default, and in fact, it doesn't have an option to change this, it's going to output the directory and file sizes in a human readable format. So at a glance, you can see, okay, this right here is 9.3 gig. This is 17 gig. Whereas by default in DU, it's going to output everything in kilobytes. Now, obviously, you can see that 258,000 kilobytes is going to be more than 72,000. But without doing that conversion, you're not really entirely sure if that's a size you should actually be worrying about. So you can do that in DU by just passing in the dash H option and you'll notice it's only gonna be, okay, it's rounded it down, but it'll only be 72 meg. Probably don't need to care about that. This took me a while to notice, but once I realized how it worked, I realized it was incredibly useful. And that is the way the highlighting is being done of the sizes. So you might notice that some of the things in here are being highlighted as red. That basically indicates the largest thing inside of that directory. So for example, we have this folder right here, this folder here, this folder here, here, and here. And only this one right here is being highlighted as red. The reason why that is useful is because at a glance, you can see, okay, this is where a lot of data is being stored. Maybe this is a place where I want to go and clear out some old files. For example, my streams folder has 48 gig inside of it. And I don't need all of those streams in there. So I could then go into that folder and see which things I should probably delete. Now, if that isn't helpful enough, we have this bar graph off the right-hand side, which basically indicates how much percentage of space the file or folder is taking up of the parent directory. So it's a bit weird to read, but the place that we started from, this takes up 100% because this is where we're starting from. Then this folder directly below it, that takes up 65%. Now, if you keep going lower and lower, you'll start to notice that things don't actually add up to 100%. The reason why it doesn't do that is because there's a lot of stuff that's going to basically be truncated out of the tree. Where it can do so, it tries to visually indicate which files and folders can be basically added up together to basically achieve the result of the higher level node. So for example, this part right here has a solid bar. The solid bar indicates how much space that specific element is actually taking up. But then it also has this bar right here made up of dots. So if you go and take all this stuff together, assuming you also have the truncated stuff as well, it's going to add up to the thing at the higher level of the tree. That might not have made that much sense, but once you start messing around the application, you'll see it actually is pretty clear. And there's one little nice distinctive touch. Because Dust includes files, it does visually indicate what is a folder and what is a file. The way it does this is by just having them as different colors. So in my case, the folders are going to be blue and the files are going to be magenta. But if your terminal theme is set up in a different way, then those colors will be very different. So far, I've just been talking about Dust without running any of the options, just running the application by itself. So let's actually go and test some of that stuff out and see what else it can do. As you would probably expect from an application like this, it does accept a file path. So let's go and pass in, uh, let's pass in, what's a fun one? My YouTube folder, and let's then pass in, I don't know, the art folder, for example. And if we go and run that there, it will go and run it on that folder instead. And all of the exact same logic from before applies. So we have the coloring, we have the bar graph, all of that exact same stuff. In this case, though, there is considerably more files. 
interestingly, the PSD files I have in there aren't actually being highlighted. I'm not sure why that's the case. I haven't seen that happen. I assumed that all files were going to be highlighted equally. Maybe if I don't have an application assigned to actually open up those files, it won't go and color them, but the documentation isn't clear on that. But you don't just have to pass in one file argument, you can actually pass in as many as you want. The way you do that is just as space separated values. Let's pass in one to my uploaded directory, and what you're going to notice is because my uploaded directory is considerably larger than my art directory, there isn't actually anything from the art directory actually in here. Because Dust is going to output the largest files and folders, the stuff that is way too small is going to just be completely ignored. But we actually can go and set the number of folders we want to see. The way we do that is by passing in the dash n argument. Now you can't do like a dash n all or dash n every folder, anything like that. If you want to have every folder, basically just include a really large number and then it's going to go and do that. And then assuming you have a modern terminal that actually lets you scroll through stuff, you should be able to scroll back and actually see everything that was dumped out. Uh, yeah, we're going to be scrolling for a while if we keep doing that. But as you can see, because some of the stuff in here is so small compared to some of the largest files, that stuff is actually showing up as 0% because it doesn't use a decimal value. It's just going to go and round it down, in this case being 0 Another way you can get Dust to print out more information is by changing how many levels down the file tree it's actually going to output. So if we just run Dust by itself, this is the output we get. If we run Dust, however, with the dash D argument, and let's say we pass in five levels of depth, now you're going to see it prints out basically everything. And then obviously you could do it in the other direction. Let's say we have uh, just depth 2 for example. Now you might notice that when we're actually changing the depth it sort of changes the way dust works altogether. By default dust doesn't seem to actually have a depth limit. What it's going to do is try to find the largest files and folders within the number of things that it can normally output and if that means it has to go down like five or six levels it's probably going to do so. But when you control the depth it's still going to sort it by the sizes, but it's going to output everything of that depth rather than just the largest things. There's a little bit we can do in the way of filtering, so if we run dust with the dash r argument, rather than having the largest thing on the bottom, now the largest thing is going to be on the top. And dash capital X will let you filter by a folder name. It's not going to be filtering by a partial text string, a regex, or globbing. Even though all of those would be incredibly useful, it has to be that full name. For example, let's say I want to ignore my YouTube folder. That's basically what we're going to get. This could be if, let's say, there's a folder that you know is going to be massive, but you don't want to actually delete anything from that folder. This will let you ignore that. If you do want to see the full file paths, you actually can go and do so. It's just done in a really dumb way. Passing the dash p argument will go and enable that. So it includes the file tree, but also includes file paths, which isn't how that's supposed to work. You can't have both of those. Having both of those gets very, very confusing. Along with that, if you want to hide the bar graph, that can be done with the dash b argument. Now, sadly, there isn't an option to go and hide the file tree. If I just have the file paths and then the sizes of them, that actually would be really useful. That would basically just be a Rust version of the plain usage of DU. I don't know why that functionality isn't actually here though. With that one addition, I think this would be a really cool application. It always feels like whenever there's a Rust rewrite, there's just one very useful feature that is always missing. I've only come across a very small handful of applications that actually have everything that I want from them. I like the idea of the bar graph. That is really useful. I like the idea of the file tree. Also really useful. But not being able to hide it if I want to do some machine parsable output is annoying. Not being able to actually put it into a machine parsable format is also kind of annoying. But, ignoring those features, I still think the application is actually worth using if you want to have a more human-readable form of DU. Anyway, for now, that's it for me. So before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. A special thank you to 
Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andre Nathan, Mitchell, David Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie Joseph, Josh, Michael, Peter D, Stephen T, through Tony Dushar, and all of my two little supporters. If you like to go on support, work them links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays, where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That'll be it from me, and I'm out. I don't know what happened to my accent there. Anyway, video's over now.